see that the, the third session of uh, this Android software testing. Uh, we have seen uh, some of the basic concepts of uh, Android software testing and Android systems uh, basics in the previous session. So, to highlight uh, so what are the types of tests and uh, what are the requirements in the of course, the initial slides we had, of course, objectives, the proficiency, learning, and uh, some of the ML systems uh, basics we have defined. Uh, what are the differentiators between general and ML systems? Also, we had an uh, explanation about uh, the elements of the ML system. So, what are the contents of the ML system? A typical ML system, uh, how it will be organized. Also, we had an understanding on the ML system development, how the target is uh, connected in terms of the development. Similarly, uh, we had uh, uh, the Emirates C, how that is used for development. Uh, this is required why because uh, some of the manual testing we may have to understand military language which will be for uh, debugging and testing perspective on the target side. And uh, in that aspect uh, we understood that uh, standard C and MLC differences where we had the source code compiled using the host machine and the link in the same machine to produce the uh, X86 version which will be run on the same host machine. Whereas in Android C, we have a CE as well as assembly code, toss compiled and assembled, uh, and those object files are linked together to produce a target table uh, run files, the binary executables, etc., which will be run on the Android system target. We also had a basic understanding of uh, Embedded software. We had gone through some of the testing definitions from IEEE and other software. We understood that the role of testing, why testing is needed, what is the cost of for defects if for testing is done at the different stages, the test requirements, design, coding, testing, production, etc. And uh, the key process elements for ML software testing, like uh, we have planning documents, technical input, guidelines, and uh, testing process for definition as part of the test process, planning, specification, execution, coverage, and uh, we had gone through the system test setup. Android system test of how it will be along with the in target. And on Android system testing setup uh, in terms of uh, end to end uh, uh, testing setup, how it will be. There is a host PC connected to the target system. Uh, there are uh, tools which will be running on the host PC uh, with the help of uh, tools. Uh, uh, the test inputs will be provided to the target system and uh, the results are received. And it may not be enough to test the target system with this tool. So there is a need of uh, real time input. The real time input uh, can be provided uh, with the help of uh, a test panel or a breakout box. So we will uh, provide the input such as uh, unlock, discrete, etc. And uh, we we have gone through different test methods. Acceptance uh, testing, system testing, integration testing, open testing, the level of test methods. The uh, we detailed out about the uh, acceptance testing, uh, user level uh, specifications to be tested, criteria, etc. So also we had uh, gone through the system testing, integration testing, uh, different levels, uh, top down, bottom up integration. And uh, unit level testing where the small units of the system are under test, and uh, this could be core functions uh, which can be considered as units under test. Also, we have a coverage uh, type of testing uh, which is called structural, which can have statements, brand, 
हमारे पास कंडीशन नंबर कंडीशन कंडीशन द टूल्स यूज्ड फॉर सक्सेसफुल आर एल आर ए मल्टीपल यूनिट्स आल्सो कैन बी ग्रुप और देयर कॉल्ड लॉजिकल यूनिट्स आर लेयर टू द स्टैंडर्ड फॉर द स्टैंडर्ड और we know the two methods of uh, testing uh, black box and white box testing black box testing uh, where uh, external specification for the uh, intricacies of the ms system are constructed and tested then as the white box uh, approach we need to break uh, the uh, the embedded test box uh, to understand uh, the internal logic of the structure or the knowledge of the the flow that is uh, happening within the embedded system of course there is a regression testing uh, multiple uh, versions of software uh, which would have fixed some of the bugs that i had come as a outcome of the previous testing uh, and those can be tested using the regression uh, testing method okay um i have a few questions on uh, the past uh, session probably you can make a note or you can come up with an answer on this or we can touch this in the next session uh, uh, for an answer on this so there are about eight questions uh, first one being uh, what is an embedded system and how it's different than general system uh, please define a uh, one or two sentences in the uh, answer in this question Uh, identify at least the five embedded systems currently. Any embedded systems uh, that we have discussed uh, earlier, uh, you can just list out. So why embedded system testing is needed? We know that uh, embedded system development is there. So as an entity, separately you need to have an embedded software or embedded system testing. Why it is needed? The next question is about uh, what are the different types of embedded software life cycle. Uh, so that embedded software life cycle is DLC followed or the embedded software one. At least name them uh, uh, one or two. What are the test methods under embedded system testing? Uh, next one is uh, what are the main differences between the black box and white box testing? Under what circumstances can we use white box? Let's brief for the all the other. What are different types of integration? Which of the different types of integration? So this is not the question. So if for this are getting answered, then our fundamentals for the concepts of embedded software system and embedded software system will be good to gear up for the next session. So I expect a few answers for all these questions. Uh, in the next session, we can discuss this. And if there are any doubts, uh, we can have an interactive session on this. Okay. So coming to the next session, uh, session three, uh, we will uh, go through the test case design, development, and test procedures. Uh, what is being used or followed? Uh, the contents of this test case procedure. Test case design and development are as below. We use a different methodology and all that. So, general testing philosophy we will highlight, and testing the concepts in terms of VNV and debugging. What is it? We will go through. And what is the test plan? So, before starting a test activity, we need to have a definite test plan. Our uh, test plan will cover up all the aspects of the embedded system. So, without the test plan, uh, embedded uh, testing uh, is not complete. So, that is the first thing that we need to do. So, we will touch upon our uh, test plan along with an example. Next one is the test specification. The test specification is the thing that identifying the uh, the test cases and uh, how it is designed. So, what are the Uh, different uh, methods to address the various requirements of the standard. Uh, with an example uh, template of uh, how the test specification looks like, we will uh, try to uh, go through that. Uh, the next one will be on the test procedure. 
given a test specification identifying the uh, test cases, how are we going to uh, develop a uh, test procedure? Test procedures are nothing but a step by step uh, action. Uh, basically, they are uh, practical steps in order to achieve the test cases. To do all these test plan specification procedures, we need a set of uh, standards that is nothing but test standards. So, the standards so will basically define how the specification should look like. So, what are the elements, what are the rules, what are the guidance that we need to consider for developing the test. So, that will be discussed along with an example. And uh, one of the test method uh, that will be used in uh, entire digestive industry, uh, it is called uh, TM method. We will uh, brief and uh, go through few slides uh, what is it about. And uh, this is one of the methods that is being followed. Whereas, uh, that whatever we are going to highlight in the specification procedure and standard is of generic nature that is uh, getting followed in the uh, one of the typical uh, embedded industry. But TM method, uh, we will uh, try to see uh, what are the different. Uh, uh, types of that uh, it is being followed. What is the strategy that is uh, separately followed in uh, embedded uh, software industry adopting the AMR method? And uh, we will uh, end with a uh, few questions on uh, the above contents. We will see if we can see uh, we can have it uh, the questions and interactions uh, in the next session or. Uh, based on the progress, uh, we will see uh, examples of specification procedure and standard. Uh, you can conclude in the next session. Okay. So, general uh, testing philosophy. So, to test an embedded product, so we need to adopt a philosophy. Uh, how we are going to test it? Uh, given a product, so what are the elements that are uh, required basically to go through the uh, testing uh, method or uh, how a user uh, should uh, look for uh, uh, what are the philosophical things. So, first he needs to go through the requirement or analyze the requirement so for what he is going to test it, then uh, he is going to identify test cases and uh, conditions. Uh, here what we do is uh, we are going to identify uh, test cases pertaining to the requirement. So, each requirement is going to address it and uh, to test it uh, what are the conditions he needs. So, that will have the identification of test cases. Once uh, we have the test cases identified, uh, we are going to create procedure. So, as I said uh, test procedures are uh, step by step uh, actions that are uh, nothing to the test cases. So, basically uh, identifying test cases uh, and conditions are uh, theoretical steps, whereas uh, creating uh, test procedures are practical uh, test in nature. Then uh, we have uh, execution. So, basically when we uh, are done with the test procedures uh, mapping to the test cases, the practicality of the test procedures are done with the help of execution. So, test executions are conducted with the help of uh, uh, test inputs as per the test procedure. So, test, uh, test input will produce the uh, input condition, and uh, once the execution is done, so we are going to come up with a result. Uh, then, uh, once we are done with the execution, so we are going to have a actual result. And uh, we are going to compare the results with the expected results. If the expected results uh, will be part of the test cases, so what should be expected? So, based on the comparison that we have with the actual results versus the uh, expected results, we are going to report uh, the particular test as fast or fail. I repeat the output of the execution, test execution, is nothing but actual result that will be compared with the expected results. Expected results are identified in the test case. 
and uh, the result of the comparison uh, output of the uh, actual results versus expected results will uh, highlight pass or fail. So that will be reported for each of the tests. The fail test uh, should discover the fault. I mean, uh, the fail uh, will identify there is a issue with that particular test. And also, it will highlight or identify the faults of the particular unit. So, this is the overall uh, test philosophy for any embedded system. It does not matter which domain, whether it is a telecom product or it is a uh, uh, automotive control unit, or it is a uh, cockpit uh, control unit, or a braking system, or any of the networking processor uh, system. Or anything, it is having the embedded system underneath it. Okay, so once we understood that general testing philosophy of the various elements, we know that we are going to do verification. So verification does how we done the system correctly. That means correctly the system has been done. Then with the validation. Uh, we do uh, have we done the correct system so two aspects uh, one to develop the system correctly and uh, the correct system is there or not uh, for example uh, we are going to develop an, uh, a telephone instrument and test it so verifying uh, the telephone instrument uh, in the sense that whether it is functioning properly is part of the verification so validation is that whether the telephone instrument is built as per the need, whether the instrument is correct as per the specification is what validation does. Uh, another point is that uh, testing uh, does not mean that it is a verification of some uh, product or uh, the product running uh, all the time or a program or a project executed on a target, uh, it is not that uh, alone, it also has uh, some of the requirements. We need to have a review of the documentation. Uh, we may need to do some code inspection. So we may have to do some static analysis. So testing involves all these uh, aspects. So then only testing is complete. So V and V is a uh, part of the testing basically. So we need to understand that V and V is one of the process uh, which comprises of all these things. So it comes under testing. So RP testing doesn't mean only V and V. Or verification alone, or validation alone uh, of a running program. It also has uh, uh, various other uh, aspects like uh, requirements, uh, analysis, review of the documentation that is pertaining to a embedded uh, system development. It also can have a debugger uh, work through code inspection and some of the uh, complete executable code analysis, static analysis. Dynamic analysis, etc. So, in that aspect, that test will be complete. Okay, so now the next uh, thing is uh, testing and debugging. These two terms will be used uh, for embedded system testing. Uh, they are using, they are used uh, interchangeably. Uh, definition is uh, for debugging, it is the act of attempting to determine the cost of this income. Of uh, malfunctions detected by testing or by sensitive user complaints. That means uh, debugging uh, will help in uh, uh, understanding and identifying some of the malfunctions uh, while uh, uh, doing the testing. So that is what one of the definition says. And uh, purpose of debugging is to find the uh, interpretation issues or errors uh, which is like a failure. And uh, and uh, rework on the issues to implement uh, the program changes that can correct error. So basically, we use uh, debugging the debugging for uh, two purposes. One is uh, to identify uh, the cause of the symptoms to determine the cause of the symptoms. So that is uh, causing some malfunctions or some issues in the uh, embedded system. Second thing is to fix the issues that was found out. So, while fixing, we will uh, reproduce the 
some of the symptoms for whether it is again uh, reoccurring or not. So with the debugging, we will uh, resolve it. And uh, once we have the program debugged and fixed, we will do the testing. So the testing uh, should clear the bugs. So purpose of testing is to detect and uh, detect or identify uh, whether the program has bugs or not. Uh, once said all this uh, test design uh, philosophy V and V like no requirement test the test uh, the first step uh, for us to do a test planning. Test planning is the most important method uh, that will be followed as a first step for any of the embedded system testing. So what are we test planning uh, items that are there. You can see a chart here if I try to depict uh, there are uh, various things, various blocks. Uh, to start with we are going to have a project specification or project plan. The project plan as an input uh, is used for the test planning. The test planning will have an input uh, from the project specification. That means uh, the entire project uh, is planned under the project specification. It will have the uh, how the, the requirements are laid out, how the coding is done, what is the environment is used, uh, what are the development tools, so etc. So this will be part of the uh, project plan. As similarly, uh, we have a testing process defined. Uh, during the planning, so what is the testing process I am going to follow? So, what are the templates or the uh, review checklist or the guidelines and standards I am going to use? It is all will be part of the testing process. Then uh, we have a test approach uh, like how the various uh, requirements or the functionalities of the embedded system product will be tested using the what approach uh, as we discussed earlier the approach one could be using the system testing the approach two could be using integration testing approach three could be using in testing. So all these approaches will be used in terms of test planning approach one approach two approach three etc up to test approaches etc will be part of the test plan. For doing the test learning uh, as we said uh, there is a testing process which will be used for testing alone. So, uh, the testing process along with the plan input and test approaches will form a applied test process. The applied test process will be a specific uh, set of test processes that will be followed for all the approaches uh, that is going to uh, be used for the embedded system testing. Finally, we will uh, come up with the test plan. Uh, the test plan will have all these elements uh, for the embedded system testing, and of course, uh, while developing the test plan, there could be some deviations to the test strategy. Test strategy is nothing but uh, the strategy for each of the approach, like uh, system level test. Uh, there are different functionalities for each functionality, I can adopt. Uh, some strategy yeah, like I have a group of functionalities in terms of performance, group of functionality for uh, uh, user specified requirements, group of functionality for uh, uh, certain uh, robustness, etc. So, it all will be categorized under test strategy, and uh, we may take some deviations uh, which may result in uh, alternate approaches. All will come under test plan. Of course, so this test planning uh, needs to be aligned uh, within the organization. So, a company's uh, test approach together with uh, its test process, uh, which is defined in the organization, are adopted to the current project based on project specification. So, as I said, project specification is the primary input. So, all this together uh, will uh, result in an applied and test process. And uh, that means uh, an overall vision uh, how we will uh, test the embedded uh, system in particular uh, the product uh, is under test. This vision is the implemented uh, uh, in a test plan. 
that means the complete region or, or test approach uh, using the particular uh, applied test process will be part of the test plan. So basically the test plan is a document uh, written in a natural language. Uh, I will uh, explain the test plan with an example so that you will understand uh, what are the things on the test plan. The process of creating a test plan is the uh, test planning. Uh, the mostly it is done uh, as I said in the early stages of the project. Uh, sometimes it will be done during the development uh, phase also that means while uh, we are uh, doing the development sometimes it may be required that uh, some prototypes may be required to be developed uh, so that uh, the developed prototypes will be in uh, identifying some of the approaches but we know what to be considered for testing. Otherwise, uh, to be developed uh, during the specification project plan itself. The project plan will have a software development plan, software uh, quality plan, software configuration control plan, software uh, testing plan. All together will be developed uh, during the initial phase of the project. Of course, uh, different uh, models uh, or different methods uh, uh, we will discuss in the later session. So that time, uh, we can detail out all this. Uh, Development process or the planning of what would be used in the uh, initial stage. Okay, this is about the uh, test plan. Uh, next is that uh, the goals, the goals of the test plan. So, the test plan is a high level uh, test plan, and the more detailed that test plan also will be there. Sometimes uh, it may not be enough to have a higher level of test plan. Sometimes uh, it may have to break up further into detailed test plan for the specific embedded test. As I said uh, in earlier version, the embedded system can also have a subsystem. So subsystem uh, subsystems also can be called as an embedded subsystem. There may be a need for uh, subsystem uh, uh, testing. So this those can be detailed out separately. So that is what I use the high level test plan and the detailed test plan. So this should be aligned with the project plan. Project plan as I said is the comprising of uh, uh, development plan, test plan, peer plan and all that and uh, the test plan should relate to the project plan. And of course uh, as for the QA uh, in quality analysis. Uh, Plan uh, the test plan should follow. That means quality analysis will point to some of the standards, the metrics, the checklist, uh, review process, and all that. So there should be a, a good pointers in the test plan. Uh, it will uh, follow the their plan. And uh, configuration management requirements, incident management, all this will be uh, highlighted in the test plan goal. How the tests are uh, configured, how the changes in the Tests are uh, taken care. Uh, how the defects are uh, how different requirements are uh, uh, incidents are uh, managed, etc. So all this will be uh, integrated together as part of the test plan. So these are some of the test plans uh, goal. Okay. And the purpose of the test plan is to uh, basically plan it, organize it, uh, control it, and follow. So, what it means is uh, we need to uh, define a workflow for uh, uh, embedded software or embedded system testing. So, that workflow will be defined in the test plan. Uh, basically, to give directions on uh, how testing should be performed. Uh, which means to specify which test strategies, processes, methods, tools and templates to be used. All this will be part of the plan and uh, once uh, defined all these uh, test strategies, processes, methods and goals, uh, it needs to be controlled and it should be followed up. And uh, basically we need to coordinate uh, our control and give continuous feedback to the workflow uh, for a period. Uh, while the testing uh, is in place. Also uh, we need to create conditions for uh, 
controlled adjustments of unforeseen events. Suppose uh, there are certain uh, deviations that may have to happen while doing the testing. So there should be a provision in the test plan uh, which will allow us to control uh, such uh, unforeseen events. All this will be part of the test plan. And uh, a typical test plan contains uh, as per the IEEE standard will be as below. Uh, there are different uh, uh, contents uh, across the organization so they follow. Uh, not only different organizations within the organization also there are uh, different uh, domains or different projects they follow. Uh, this is typically driven uh, basically from the need of the customer or uh, the need of the product. Some product may need a stringent test plan in detail, some product may not need that much. Again, depending, it depends on the, uh, uh, the definition of the product uh, at what level that needs to be planned uh, in terms of uh, the system testing. So, as per the NC or IEEE 829 or 1998 uh, uh, test plan, the contents are test plan identifier, uh, introduction to the test plan. What are the test items, and uh, what are the features uh, that are to be tested? Uh, what are the features that are not required to be tested? Uh, and the approach, the test strategy, and uh, criteria to define uh, path fail of the test, and uh, suspension criteria and resistance the requirements. Like uh, we have several requirements uh, grouped together, and uh, while testing. Uh, we may come across initial stages uh, failure, so in that case we may have to suspend uh, that test and uh, go ahead with the next set of tests. And uh, once so it is fixed, how we are going to resume the test and uh, how are we going to define the criteria for pass or fail. So next uh, once the test is done, how are we going to deliver the test or the report and uh, what are the testing tasks. What are the environmental needs for doing the testing? And uh, who are all are responsible? And uh, what is the responsibility? And uh, for defining the responsibilities from the uh, staff. And what are what are the staffing needs? And in terms of training them for the build system part. Uh, so basically, why I'm uh, why they have listed out here. It is uh, very necessary that. Uh, the embedded system of tester so understanding equally as a developer in terms of the end product. So, what is the end product uh, supposed to do? What is the intended outcome of the embedded product? Uh, so, all these aspects in terms of the specification requirement, maybe some of the design elements have to be undergone. That means the system knowledge is uh, very much important in terms of the embedded system product. Uh, without system knowledge, it's very difficult to uh, test it. Uh, uh, basically, test it means uh, the user cannot uh, define a test case or define uh, uh, a test procedure. And without uh, system knowledge, uh, you cannot do a test. So, it is a fundamental uh, for the test means. So, this will be defined in the test plan. Okay, coming to next, there is a schedule. Uh, schedule will have a, a testing aspect so like when the test cases will be defined, so when the test environment will be available, who is going to be deployed for which testing, so when the results will be come, so when is the regulation testing going to happen. Uh, we can uh, have an example of a test schedule, how it will be organized, uh, maybe in the uh, next session. Okay, what are the test risks? What are the continuous risks uh, for those respect? What are the risks involved for doing that? And uh, once the testing in all aspects are done, who is going to approve it uh, in the organization? Like uh, there are different departments uh, which are responsible for approving uh, the test available, the testing outcome. So those uh, will be part of this approval. So these are uh, typical test plan contents. Uh, in the example that I follow in the next slides, uh, will uh, either directly or indirectly follow this uh, standard uh, sixteen sections for which we have discussed in this talk. <coughs> okay, so okay, so this plan identifier, I 
I will not talk today so much uh, uh, as introduction, first item, speakers will be prepared, speakers not be prepared, okay. So, uh, as needed, maybe we can detail out all these classes in the uh, next session as well. Okay. So, once we have the test plan uh, content, uh, so uh, we will have a uh, test part of the content, uh, the test strategy definition. Uh, these are some of the important things to that we need to uh, define. So, what is test strategy? So, uh, basically, this will define uh, which design techniques needs to be applied for what sort of test. Like, we have a, a test identified for a particular requirement. So, how I'm going to test it, or uh, what is the test design? What is the test case uh, inputs or the technique that I will apply for that requirement and uh, to produce a good uh, test strategy? And uh, for doing that, uh, what is the tool uh, or what is the test condition or infrastructure that are needed uh, or to be developed uh, to do the test of uh, uh, requirements or the functionalities of the emulate system. So, this is the first thing that I need to have an awareness of that means the test strategy uh, which needs to be done uh, uh, first before uh, I develop this test case or as part of the test plan. Test plan uh, will uh, strategize uh, or cover the aspects of system level, user level, integration level, component level. That means uh, test plan will identify clearly. So, given a embedded product, how the embedded product will be tested as a whole, uh, in the what level, uh, what is uh, going to be tested, the like system level. Uh, the complete black box uh, will be tested or uh, user level uh, the fitness to use uh, sort of a testing will be done and uh, integration we have top of bottom uh, top, of, uh, top of or bottom of uh, process will be used in terms of uh, integrating the various uh, modules. Similarly, we have a uh, unit level or uh, component level uh, testing uh, that also will be part of the test plan. Of course, uh, this test strategy or the test plan uh, strategy uh, is depending on the project size and complexity uh, which needs to be laid out uh, appropriately and uh, test planning can be divided into a hierarchy of uh, test plans. For example, uh, High level test or master test and some detailed test. As I said, subsystems can be powered under detailed test, and detailed test can be coming under detailed test plan. Okay. So, I will uh, go through an example of a test plan, how it looks like. Uh, basically, this uh, provides uh, an example of uh, how a test plan uh, uh, looks like. Oops, I open the test test. Uh, okay. Okay. Test plan example. Uh, uh, let's have a understanding on how it is. So basically this is a template uh, uh, typically used, so the product I use here with a name as XXX which can be anything, uh, it can be a control unit or an instrument or any name you can give it. So, so we have a header uh, with a proper uh, test plan and the released version and the uh, name of the product. If you have any questions, probably uh, you can go through this. I can share this. And uh, the first page will have all the uh, document distribution uh, icons, like uh, as I said, the strategy and the standard strategy in terms of uh, uh, covering covering the uh, all the levels of testing. So now we will go through an example test plan. 
Okay. So this is a typical uh, software test plan which is followed in the uh, industry. I took an example. Uh, I named the product as XXX. You can name any of the product name such as uh, uh, a control unit or any instrument name or anything. So there is a header, there is a test plan uh, uh, identifier uh, identifying the products. Its distribution, uh, the various people or the various uh, stakeholders required, and their function, their name, uh, nature, etc. So who has it done? Who has verified? Who is the uh, approved uh, this particular test plan? So this is very important because uh, this is test uh, as I said test flow. Uh, this document is controlled in the configuration, and this will be released as a uh, beginner uh, for the test cycle. So these are the header footer and the starting page, and uh, we have the revision history. And uh, whenever we update this test plan, as I said, there could be some deviation, uh, there could be some change in the strategy for the period of uh, testing that will be listed under the uh, revision history, identifying the both changes and the impact. And of course, we have the test plan divided into two sections. There is the introduction of the uh, test plan, the applicable uh, or the input document, uh, the responsibility, the methods, uh, verification activities, verification uh, environment. I have used verification uh, here because, uh, as I said, it is used as a Interchangeable uh, words uh, along with the testing. You can consider verification as of course. Okay, so we have verification activities, verification environment, uh, testability to compliance uh, and uh, mapping, mapping to the how we are going to trace it uh, or testing to the embedded uh, test, embedded uh, system product. And any additional consideration we are going to have it here. Standards, techniques, and guidelines will be part of the class. Okay, so in introduction, uh, we are going to introduce the purpose of the test plan. So, what are the responsibilities? So what is the chain control? So what is the compliance? And we are going to have observation and uh, acronym. I have not put any uh, Text under this because these are all implied or understood. Maybe in the end, for some other questions, we can create an example or the audience can create an example such as the embedded system. So probably, I am going to draw an activity which will help the audience or the students to come up with a. Uh, good test plan. Probably that will be an activity we will uh, take up uh, in the uh, following session. So, first thing will be the introduction uh, with the purpose, responsibilities, chain control, uh, compliance, and abbreviation as part of the test plan. Next, we have uh, uh, the applicable uh, or the reference document part of the test plan. So, what are the uh, external uh, documents we are going to refer as part of the development of the uh, test plan? This could be a customer uh, given uh, document or any industry standard, or ISO standard, or uh, design standard, or a certificate standard which are used for developing the test plan. <laughs> Similarly, we will have an internal applicable document such as organization of the place, review guidelines, whatever it is. And uh, verification responsibility. Uh, for every project or product, there is a definition of uh, uh, responsibility. That responsibility will have uh, identifying the identification of the organization. Uh, the organization uh, will identify uh, what is the team, how it is structured, who is responsible for what. So there could be a ten member team. In the ten member team, uh, uh, what are the people uh, responsible for uh, doing? Uh, each test, 
who is responsible for delivery, who is responsible for uh, uh, process adherence, who is responsible for uh, quality, and uh, who can do an independence uh, validation or verification, etc. So, this is the part of the verification responsibility. Then uh, we will have a verification method. So this will basically identify uh, the testing methods like uh, higher level testing, low level testing. All these testing methods are uh, defined under the testing method. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, testing is not the not the only method that is followed. There are uh, other strategies also which needs to be used. So other strategies could be a static analysis or any of the dynamic analysis method. Or it could be a review. If I do a review, so what is the review method I am going to do? It? Like offline review or peer review or self review or uh, review with the customer or whatever it is for the testing review. Analysis uh, in terms of uh, code analysis or the coding system or the static analysis of the entire uh, project build. So these are all, these are all will be part of the verification method. Next, uh, we have as part of the test plan or the verification plan is verification activities. Once I define all these uh, methods, so what are the activities I am going to conduct uh, to verify uh, this? It could be planning process verification, that means uh, the test plan, uh, as per the test plan, the process is in. Uh, in uh, use or if the process has been followed or not and uh, verification of uh, uh, system requirements that means uh, the verification activities that is taking care of the uh, system requirements and uh, similarly uh, software requirements or the high level requirements and uh, verification of outputs of integration or verification of testing results that means uh, entire uh, test life cycle will be uh, Verified is help of these activities. That means the planning uh, process or the uh, requirements uh, verification or uh, some of the software requirements or the high level requirements or when the models are integrated, uh, the outputs of the integrated model uh, verified or not. Then the entire uh, testing the output or the reports or the results will be verified whether that results are uh, as per the expected output and all that. Uh, the total outcome of the testing. So once we have the verification activities, uh, we will identify the verification environment. Uh, what is the environment I am going to use in terms of uh, laying out the complete uh, test plan element like uh, uh, low level testing, high level testing, what is my environment I am going to use for the different testing strategies uh, and uh, to have that environment what are the tools I am going to use it could be from uh, a test uh, a PC a desktop till the lowest possible uh, assembly code or lowest possible uh, tools that are going to be used uh, for doing the new testing. Similarly uh, if the tools are used, used from uh, third party, how they are going to be qualified, or whether the uh, used tools are uh, qualified tools, whether uh, they are uh, compliant uh, to the standard, whether uh, they can be acceptable by the customer process, etc. All this will be part of the verification. Next, we have the traceability to compliance. It means how I am going to trace it, all the uh, test. Uh, Testing requirement. That means uh, I have a, a testing strategy and the testing uh, high-level requirement or low-level requirement, etc. So the objective is to cover 100% of the entire system uh, requirement. So how I'm going to achieve? So how I'm going to map it with the various uh, testing? All this will be part of the testing. For example, it could be uh, requirement based testing for testing the uh, requirements. So that should cover up the 100 percent of the requirement and uh, I mean do a integration testing mapping to the design of the 
and that is done. So to map to the 100% of the design. Similarly, uh, low level design or uh, any of the uh, low level requirements uh, which are done uh, with the unfortunate testing or the compound testing that should be compliant with the uh, low level uh, requirement. So how I am going to trace it, so that all will be part of the tracing in this system. And uh, any other additional uh, consideration that I need to consider for doing the testing, like something like a partitioning. Partitioning means here uh, embed system uh, will have uh, mostly two units, something like uh, a low level partition or uh, high level, uh, uh, low level partition with different components or high level partition with different applications. Uh, for example, low level uh, partition is a bootloader or a boot software, high level partition is uh, an application sitting on top of the uh, boot software. So, both are needed. So, given an embedded product, it can be comprised of uh, such similar uh, partition, and the applications, uh, of course, will also have uh, different partitions uh, connected into that, where we have multi threaded or multi task uh, uh, embedded applications. So, if there are any partitions used in terms of embedded system product, that also needs to be highlighted. And that needs to be considered. Similarly, the uh, the compilers uh, for compiling uh, the test software or the embedded software that needs to be considered. And uh, for doing the testing, we may use a lot of tools, or we may use some of the uh, standard library or uh, provided by the uh, vendors. Uh, one of them, uh, I mean, the group of them is called as COTS, that is commercial official for tools. Uh, this could be a library or a third party uh, support uh, uh, tools. So, all this will be considered uh, uh, for doing the test plan. That needs to be highlighted here. Uh, last uh, but not the least is the standard coupling and the guidelines. As I said, uh, these are uh, some of the process uh, elements that needs to be added for doing the embedded system testing. So we will uh, go through them uh, separately in the uh, next slide. So I will uh, once again highlight uh, uh, the basic elements of the. Software uh, test plan or verification plan. Uh, it will have uh, the verification responsibility, verification method, uh, the verification activities, and the environment that is used for the verification, and uh, how I'm going to trace it, uh, the various uh, verification activities, etc. And of course, uh, we have uh, additional considerations like partition, the compiler used, or any of the calls. And uh, last, uh, we will list out all the standard techniques and guidelines. We will also point to the uh, various process elements that are used as part of the techniques and guidelines. So, this is all about the test plan. So, this is uh, nothing but a software test plan or template. As I said, we can create an example test plan identifying any vendor system that we can have it as an activity or as an assignment, some stage of the lab session or practical session. Okay. So that is about uh, the test plan uh, example. Okay. So next, uh, coming to test specification. So once we have the test plan uh, laid out, uh, we are going to start with the test specification. So what is the test specification? Test specification defines a party test. The specification is part of the test layer. I will tell you what is the test layer. The test process basically uh, identifying uh, test, test data, 
and uh, test conditions etc. Uh, this all will be under uh, PM control that is configuration control. It is managed uh, uh, separately in the uh, independent code. And uh, the specification will have a basic building block of uh, test cases. The specification will have inspection uh, uh, to use uh, the scripts. The specification will identify the requirements. Also, the specification will uh, support the complete uh, uh, test cases and uh, test cases and how this works. So this is about uh, test specification and uh, I will go through a test specification example and uh, later we will uh, test based on the test case design. Of course the test case design is part of the test specification itself. Uh, Uh, this is uh, typically a test case uh, development uh, specification or test specification as it is called. Uh, the template I have used is similar to the one uh, in terms of the structure how the template looks like. Same as a test uh, plan we will have a correct name uh, we can identify with our own name. Uh, the software test cases will be identified as part of the test specification. Uh, it same as uh, the earlier one, so where we have uh, uh, various stakeholders identified in the first page, then we will have a revision system. So, basically, we will uh, update the document uh, whenever there is a change in the test cases. Once it is a baseline, uh, there is a possibility that. Uh, uh, the test cases themselves will have uh, some uh, challenges or some of the issues uh, uh, which needs to be reworked. So for that, we use uh, changes into the test specification. Uh, test specification basically will have uh, two basic uh, sections. The first section uh, will identify the uh, test cases for each of the requirement. The next uh, section will identify the group basically once we develop all the test cases for each of the requirement we are going to group it why we need to group and all that we will understand when going to the test uh, for doing this test cases uh, there is a uh, precondition that means uh, there is a precondition so that needs to be uh, in place for the developing the test case. So that will be discussed in the third section. So test cases identification for each of the requirement. That is the first section. The next section uh, is about test grouping. That means all the cases so whatever we have uh, identified here that means each one is a test case. Each one is a test case. Test case 1, 2, 3, up to n for each of the requirement. There could be multiple requirement, and each requirement could have multiple test cases. Once we identify uh, test cases, all these test cases will be grouped. So, why we need grouping and all that, I will explain later. We will understand the need of the grouping. So, that will be done under the second case. And for doing the test uh, cases, we need to have certain preconditions. Like we need to have a minimum uh, preconditions that needs to be done for uh, doing the test cases. Of course, we have uh, test scenarios for uh, different static analysis method. Uh, these are something like uh, different uh, um, different uh, tests. Uh, that are taken under this. We are going to list out what are the uh, different types of static analysis, uh, which are the functional tests that are uh, taken care in this test. So, what are the non functional uh, requirements that are addressed? 
all this will be highlighted as part of the appendix. So, these three basic sections uh, will constitute the test specification. These are the test cases and the grouping of the test cases and the dependent. I will uh, detail out or the explain uh, each of this in the next session. Okay. So, in the next session we will uh, touch upon uh, test case design how it is going to be done. Uh, we have seen in the test case uh, uh, section that we are going to have test case of identified and test case conditions and the three conditions also we have uh, grouping how we are going to do it. So, that is all part of the test case design actually. And uh, what are the elements of the test case design? And uh, once we are done with the test cases, we are going to have test procedures. As I said in the beginning, test procedures are nothing but step by step uh, actions of the test cases in terms of practicality. That means test cases are uh, in theoretical uh, nature, but uh, test procedure is in uh, practical. In okay, that's all about uh, this session. Uh, we will have uh, the next session uh, starting from uh, the test specification and the test case, and also we will have uh, in the next session uh, test case, test case design, test procedure, uh, example of a test procedure. And uh, the last uh, thing will be the test standard. So, what are the test standards uh, uh, that are used? So we will uh, go to an example and uh, software test case uh, typical standards we will go through. That will be part of the next class. Yeah.